Hey. Hey, Patty. Yes, I'm actually going to give you a response now on my wrestling review. <laughs> um, in all honesty, I definitely watched your whole thing, both parts of um, your Raw review. I definitely agree with you on a lot of places. Um, I disagree with you on a lot of places. Um, you know, I definitely think for me one of the things I disagree with is I th I honestly think love Fandango, hate Fandango, however you want to put it, they're definitely building up to something. I can see that. They're definitely building up to something. I Sooner or later there's going to end up being a huge match, Jericho versus Fandango. And then hopefully this whole nonsense... I agree with you on that part, will be done. Um, as for the rest of Raw, um, you know, I got to see most of it because I'm off on Mondays now, so I kind of, to joke around, I kind of uh, traded in my TNA for WWE, which for me is rare. I'd rather watch TNA half the time, <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> but one of the main things I actually wanted to bring up was how you brought up at the end of this video about the streaming and you know how I am I grew up in the business of professional wrestling and for me you know like you talk about not wanting to steal from CM Punk to me you know and I know why you brought him up you know I have no problems with that my whole thing has always been whether you love everybody on the roster or not you know uh, you know my feelings I, I don't steal from any of them because I grew up in the business. Um, I think some of the guys need to go back and remember where they came from beforehand. Like, I know I know right now, guys like Antonio Cesaro, Claudio Castagnoli, um, Cassius Ono, Chris Hero, um, Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, you know, da Brian, Daniel Bryan, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. I mean, come on. They remember where they came from on the independence. And even for me, guys like that, guys who I will say I like, I definitely wouldn't want to take money out of their pockets. Because I do know that in the professional wrestling business, you know, so many people think that because they work for Vince McMahon that they get paid millions upon millions of dollars. And anybody else who watches this I want you to know that's not exactly the truth um, in professional wrestling you do not make that much money to begin with on the indie circuits or otherwise I've done small ass shows where I've maybe gotten paid gas money in all honesty you know I mean the only way I made money was when I put my body on the line to do a death match that's the only way I made money but, um, <clears throat> you know, I definitely agree with the whole streaming. I mean, you even remember when you came over, when you and Eddie came over to watch Best of the Best. You know, in all honesty, I probably could have found a place where I could have streamed it, you know, and not worried about it. But knowing that the money would be going from RF basically into DJ's hands for DJ to use to put on more CZW shows, to put on more um, combat zone shows, stuff that, you know, I definitely can get into. For me was just, you know, that's one of the reasons why, like, I'll spend the $15 or whatever it is, $15, $20 to order the iPay-per-views. I mean, I just spent 20 bucks to order the uh, Queen and King and the CZW doubleheader which, cheap plug for a minute, if you take a look, I have my review on WSU and CZW's Queen and King of the Ring Tournament. I had to. This is my wrestling review page. <laughs> but, you know, and then even still, like, I, I can tell you, when I go to Tournament of Death next month, I'm probably going to end up picking up the Best of the Best DVD anyway. You know? Um, you know, I'm probably going to pick up a couple more DVDs just because of the fact that I know by getting the DVDs, I'm putting money into the wrestler's pockets. 
That's the reason why, like I said, love them. Or I know just from buying the CZW hoodie that I have on, I was putting money into the wrestlers' pockets. I mean, that's one of the other reasons too why you know I don't like buying the T-shirts after the shows. Like, if I go to a WWE show, you've got the guys out in front of the arena selling the t-shirts. No, I don't buy it from them because, you know, even though, yeah, it's cheaper, I'd rather go back to the merchandise stand and drop, yeah, probably twice as much as they're asking for outside, but drop that money because I know that would go towards the wrestlers. But that's what I have to say about it. Um, and you know what? As far as Extreme Rules goes, the one problem I kind of have is how they kept calling John Cena Mr. Extreme. He's not Mr. Extreme. You want Mr. Extreme, you go look at guys like the Sandman, Mick Foley. You look at guys like um, Terry Funk. Guy who I look up to, Hayabusa, Atsushi Onida. Those guys are Mr. Hardcore. Those guys are Mr. Extreme. Hell, even Paul, technically Paul Heyman is Mr. Extreme. But I digress. But that's it for me. I'm about to go to bed because I'm making this video at 3.18 in the morning. So I will say good night. And to use my catchphrase, I'll see you ringside.